Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 6th of May. 200 terrorists ready to be launched into Jammu and Kashmir from across border, says Indian Army official. Pakistan government to probe former PM Imran Khan's claims of foreign conspiracy in his ouster. And Sri Lankans go on strike, take to the streets to protest government. And now for all the details. Senior Indian Army official Lieutenant General Upendra Duvedi on Friday said that there are 200 terrorists staged across the border ready to be launched into Jammu and Kashmir territory. His statement came on the day Indian security forces neutralized Ashraf Malvi, a top commander of Pakistan-based Hizbul Mujahideen outfit, in an encounter in Pahalgam area of Jammu and Kashmir. Lieutenant General Upendra Duvedi, the commander of the Indian Army's Northern Command on Friday, said that there are 200 terrorists staged across the border ready to be launched into India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. Speaking to reporters, the official blamed that the complicity of Pakistan Army and its agencies cannot be denied as there are approximately six major terrorist camps and 29 minor ones near the border. His remarks came on a day Ashraf Malvi, a top commander of Pakistan-based Hizbul Mujahideen outfit, was neutralized, along with two other terrorists in Pahalgam area of Jammu and Kashmir. Approximately, I'll say about 200 terrorists who are waiting across to get launched to this place. In the hinterland also, if I have to look at, I will say approximately that 40 to 50 local terrorists who may be there in the system and foreign terrorists, we cannot say for sure how many are there as of today. Earlier on Wednesday, India's border security force detected a cross-border tunnel in Sambar district of Jammu and Kashmir, suspected to be used for infiltration by terrorists. India has long accused our rival Pakistan infiltrates terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley, a charge Islamabad denies. India's permanent representative to the UN, T.S. Tirumurthy, on Thursday gave a stern response to Dutch envoy to the UK after he said India should not have abstained from voting in the UN General Assembly on Ukraine. Tirumurthy told the ambassador, kindly don't patronize us. India knows what to do. India's permanent representative to the UN Ambassador T.S. Tirumurthy on Thursday told the Ambassador of the Netherlands to the UK not to patronise India. New Delhi knows what to do. After the Dutch envoy made a comment on Twitter that India should not have abstained from voting in the UN General Assembly on Ukraine. India has so far abstained on procedural votes and draft resolutions at all UN forums that deplored Russian aggression against Ukraine, while calling for an immediate end to violence. Western allies have repeatedly criticized India's neutral stand, as it has refrained from explicitly condemning Russia, its Cold War ally over the devastating conflict. Speaking at the UNSC there briefing on Ukraine earlier on Thursday, Tirumurthy said, India remains on the side of peace and supports all efforts to alleviate the suffering of the people of Ukraine. He emphasized that India has also strongly condemned civilian killings in Ukraine's Busha and supports calls for independent investigation. India remains on the side of peace and therefore believes that there will be no winning side in this conflict. And while those impacted by this conflict will continue to suffer, diplomacy will be a lasting casualty. Earlier this week, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Denmark during his three-nation Europe trip called for a ceasefire in Ukraine and peace talks between Kyiv and Moscow. He also informed India has been sending humanitarian supplies to Ukraine and its neighbours. 
The World Health Organization in its report this week said that India had 4.7 million excess COVID deaths, the highest by far for any country, and the figure nearly 10 times that of government's official count for 2020-2021. India has questioned the modelling methodology used by the organization and said it is disappointed with its one-size-fits-all approach. India has objected to a new World Health Organization WHO report of people have died as a result of COVID-19, which showed the country's toll was nearly 10 times the reported figure. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government has rejected a WHO estimate released on Thursday that 4.7 million people died in India as a result of the pandemic until last year, when hospitals ran out of oxygen and beds due to a record wave driven by the Delta variant. India has reported only 524,002 COVID-19 deaths, the most after the United States and Brazil, with more than 43 million infections. Actual infections are believed to be in hundreds of millions in the country of 1.35 billion people. A senior health official said the Indian government rejected the WHO estimates as the numbers are based on modelling and assumptions. Modelling is, you know, a one-size-fits-all kind of an assumption that you apply, you may apply that where the systems are poor. But to apply assumptions based on a subset of states, based on reports that come from, from the websites and media reports, and then you come out with an exorbitant number is not tenable. So that's on the process and we are disappointed by what WHO has done. In what has been the most comprehensive look at the true global toll of the pandemic so far, there were 14.9 million excess deaths associated with COVID-19 by the end of 2021, the UN body said on Thursday. Meanwhile, leader of India's main opposition Congress party Rahul Gandhi on Friday demanded a hefty rise in compensation for the families of those who died of COVID-19. He asked the government to compensate the families of each person dying of COVID-19 with 400,000 rupees, that is 5,213 US dollars. The government currently gives 50,000 rupees once deaths are confirmed to be from COVID. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Information Minister Maryam Aurangzeb has said that the newly elected government will form a commission to probe the claim by ousted Premier Imran Khan that a foreign conspiracy led to his ouster. The former Prime Minister has aired his conspiracy allegations in three huge public rallies that he has held since he was ousted in April and has demanded snap elections. Pakistan's Information Minister Mariam Aurangzeb on Thursday said that the newly elected government will form an independent commission to impartially probe the claim by former Premier Imran Khan that a foreign conspiracy led to his ouster. Ex-PM and PTI party chairman Imran Khan has repeatedly accused the U.S. of conspiring to dislodge his government through a parliamentary vote of confidence in April, citing communication from the country's ambassador in Washington. The U.S. has bluntly denied the allegations. Aurangzeb said Imran Khan came up with the foreign conspiracy angle to hide Mehmet corruption during his tenure. कि ये जो बेरूनी मुल्क साजिश का ड्रामा है इसके असल किरदार इमरान खान साहब हैं ये इंक्वायरी कमीशन इंडिपेंडेंट होगा और इसकी तमाम इंक्वायरी पाकिस्तान की आवाम के सामने की जाएगी this comes as Imran Khan earlier this week in an interview to a media channel claimed that the government of PM Shahbaz Sharif has hired companies that are preparing material for his character assassination instead of giving an answer for the billions of rupees they had stolen. Khan has also aired his conspiracy allegations in three huge public rallies he has held since he was ousted and demanded snap elections. The next parliamentary election is due in 2023. A latest report of the U.S. Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction paints grim picture of the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. The Cigar report says since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, humanitarian conditions have deteriorated with over 24.4 million people in need of humanitarian assistance in Afghanistan. The Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, Cigar, in its latest report said 
that since the takeover of the Islamic Emirate in August 2021, humanitarian conditions have deteriorated with over 24.4 million people in need of humanitarian assistance in Afghanistan, an increase from 18.4 million in 2021. Sigar in a report to the US Congress said that 70% of the Afghans are unable to provide their basic needs. This comes as the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO of the United Nations said that 53 world countries including Afghanistan face acute hunger. Afghanistan has been suffering from drought in recent years made worse by climate change with low crop yields raising fears of serious food shortages. The weather has exacerbated problems of poverty caused by decades of war and then a drop in foreign aid and the freezing of assets abroad after the Taliban took over and US led forces withdrew in August. The international community is grappling with how to help the country of some 40 million people without benefiting the Taliban. In news from Sri Lanka Thousands of Sri Lankans went on strike on Friday and took to the streets demanding President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's and the government step down for to take responsibility for the island's worst financial crisis in decades. Shops, schools and banks in the capital city of Colombo were shuttered, joining thousands of public and private sector workers in other major cities around the country in the strike. Hundreds of university students and other protesters remained camped outside the main road to Palu where they started a sit in on Thursday hit hard by the pandemic rising oil prices and tax cuts by the government sri lanka has been left with as little as 50 million us dollars in usable foreign reserves the country's finance minister said this week shortages of imported food fuel and medicines has led to more than a month of sporadically violent anti government protests in news from bangladesh Civil society groups, NGOs and Islamic parties held protests across Bangladesh on Thursday to observe Dopa Day in solidarity with China's Uyghur Muslim community. Several events including street plays, bicycle rallies and public meetings highlighted human rights violations against persecution of the Uyghur Muslim in China, particularly in the Xinjiang region. It is believed that around 2 million Uyghurs and other minorities have been placed under detention centers by the Chinese government. People in the internment camps have described being subjected to forced political indoctrination and torture and say they have been prohibited from practicing their religion or speaking their language. However, China denies such mistreatment and says the camps provide vocational training. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir is considered to be a treasure trove of arts and crafts. In a bid to promote Kashmiri art and uplift the artisan community, a craft safari tour was organized by handicrafts and handloom authorities this week. Have a look. A craft safari tour was organized by the Department of Handicrafts and Handloom to promote Kashmiri art and uplift the artisan community in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory this week. Officials along with civil society members visited many workshops where the artisan community were doing their daily craft work like wood carving, crewel working, chain stitches and embroidery units. Grassroots level pe jo artisans hain और जो बड़ा काम करते हैं आपने भी देखा होगा तो उनके पास जाना उनको इसे अप्रिसिएशन मिलता है उनको भी लगता है कि कोई है जो हमारे काम को देखने आता है क्योंकि हम सोर्स पे जाते हैं तो इसे उनको बड़ा अप्रिसिएशन मिलता है प्रोत्साहन मिलता है और हम उनके साथ और भी कोई काम का इंटरेक्शन करते हैं लोगों को उनके पास ले जाते हैं द यूनिक एंड अमेजिंग हैंड वर्क ऑफ कश्मीरी आर्टिजन आर फेमस अक्रॉस द ग्लोब एंड है गुड इंटरनेशनल मार्केट द आर्टिजन कम्युनिटी अर्लियर फेस अ लॉट ऑफ हार्डशिप ड्यू टू द सिक्योरिटी सिचुएशन एंड डिस्टर्बिंग एटमोसफेयर अराइजिंग फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर but with improved security situation and special attention from the authorities like organizing craft safari tour that boosts traditional art and handlooms artisans are happy shuru se chahta tha ki ye craft ke liye aisa kuch ho unfortunately halat ki wajah se kabhi aisa nahi ho paya lekin aaj hi ho raha hai main welcome karta hu is cheez ko kyunki ye zaruri hai ki artisan ki ek pehchan ho chuki hai handicraft to bahut kaam kar rahe hain alag khususan Jammu and Kashmir is considered to be a treasure trove of arts and crafts. 
Recently, Srinagar, the summer capital of Jammu Kashmir, also made entry into UNESCO's network of creative cities. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.